Good morning, Pastor Ed here from Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey with Daily Devotions for Tuesday, December the 1st, 2020. Once again, we're marking something new. First on Sunday, it was Advent, the beginning of a brand new church year. And yesterday, it was the beginning of a, a new week. And now today, it's the beginning of a, a new month. New, new, new. But despite all this newness, some things never change. The human condition, for one. The fact that the same mistakes we see in the Bible, for instance, we continue to make to this very day. Which is one of the reasons why the lessons of the Bible are so enduring. They speak to us and to our current situation just as clearly as they spoke to God's people thousands of years ago. This morning our reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians. Now the church in Corinth could be a, a bit of an ornery bunch, but as we will hear, Paul could nevertheless give thanks for them. Not because of their superlative qualities, of course, but because of God's abiding presence working in their midst. However, before we go any further this morning, let's begin first, as we always do, with the service of responsive prayer, namely the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and Martin Luther's morning prayer. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. As I mentioned at the outset, our reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, uh, verses 3 through 9, where Paul writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you've been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. There was a Scottish minister by the name of Alexander White who was known for his uplifting prayers in the pulpit. Um, he always seemed to find something for which to be grateful. Well, one Sunday morning, the weather was so gloomy that one church member thought to himself, certainly, the preacher won't think of anything for which to thank the Lord on a wretched day like this. Much to his surprise, however, White began by praying, We thank thee, O God, that it is not always like this. I'm reminded of that story because Paul is able to find something to give thanks for. Um, to give thanks to God for this congregation that in many ways, and we don't have time to get into it, but in many ways was, was stubborn and frustrating uh, for him and 
it ended up he ended up writing multiple letters they've um, kind of come down to us as first and second Corinthians but there it, it may have been even more than that letters kind of combined and so forth in circulation so um, yeah the, these folks really intelligent really smart all kinds of gifts but you know a lot of issues a lot of problems in that church in Corinth and yet Paul says I give thanks to you um, but it's for you it gives thanks to God for them um, somebody once said that the church is like Noah's Ark the stench inside would be unbearable if it weren't for the storm outside it's true he says sometimes we stink and the world is stormy but as imperfect as we are on this side of heaven the miracle is that God in fact chooses to use his church to use us as his proclaiming love truth and hope now the interesting thing about that quote is that it's from uh, Charles Chuck Colson who some of you of a certain age my age and above I guess uh, will remember that he was um, one of the advisors served in the in the Nixon administration got caught up in all that Watergate stuff ended up going to prison uh, and then a few years later had a uh, a real um, conversion experience kind of turned his life around and um, sparked a, a, a change that led to his beginning a, a special uh, prison fellowship uh, ministry. So um, he was uh, known at one point as Nixon's hatchet man. So obviously he had a, a colored past and he made uh, probably admittedly uh, a lot of mistakes around the way so he knew of which he was speaking that the church um, kind of stinks like the ark at times but um, compared to what's on the, the storm on the outside um, and and it's it's because of of the calling that that we have that God chooses to use imperfect problematic sinful people um, to do uh, to do God's work, to do God's ministry, to, to fulfill God's will. And so Paul talks here, talks here about giving thanks to God for the Corinthians um, because they have been enriched uh, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Of course, they, these were, uh, this was a cosmopolitan city, a lot of intelligent people. They thought they were pretty bright and so forth, and so knowledge was something that they... Um, took great pride in uh, and there's all kinds of knowledge a cute little story about four-year-old little four-year-old little boy by the name of Johnny who said mommy where did babies come from and the mother replied well the stork dear mommy who keeps bad people from robbing our house he asked well Johnny's mother answered the police dear mommy if our house was on fire who would save us well the fire department dear mommy where does food come from farmers dear mommy yes dear then what do we need daddy for? Paul talks about the knowledge, not the knowledge that we acquire um, uh, in life from from being you know young children and learning basic things and maybe drawing in, in incorrect conclusions, but but the knowledge that we have through Christ, through through the presence of of Christ in our lives, being enriched by Christ and strengthened uh, in that way. And then Paul says at the end of the reading, God is faithful. Uh, by him you are called into the fellowship of his son. We are, we are partners, we are heirs, we are friends uh, in Christ. Um, all because of Christ. Um, back during the Vietnam War, uh, a rural, rural village uh, was bombed and an orphanage run by missionaries had been hit an eight-year-old girl had multiple in injuries and she was bleeding profusely a navy doctor and nurse came but only had their medical kits and the girl however was in critical condition and needed an immediate blood transfusion well neither american had the right blood type however several of the uninjured uninjured children did when the navy doctor tried to communicate in some pigeon Vietnamese and the nurse in some French they tried to explain that unless someone could replace some of the girl's blood 
she was going to die. And they asked if anyone would be willing to give some blood. But a wide-eyed silence met their request. And after several moments of eye searching, a little hand went up, dropped down, and went back up again. Oh, thank you, exclaimed the nurse. What's your name? Hang, the little boy replied. And during the procedure, Hang covered his face with his free hand and, and started to cry. And the nurse asked, is it hurting? And he shook his head, no. But something was obviously upsetting the boy. Well, just then a Vietnamese nurse arrived to help, and she was able to talk to him and communicate with him, and she learned that the little boy thought that he was dying. He misunderstood and thought that you had asked him to give all of his blood to save the little girl, she said. But why would he be willing to do that, the Navy nurse asked. The Vietnamese nurse asked, Hang, why? And he answered, Because she is my friend. What a moving story. What a poignant story. But reminds us um, that it wasn't just a blood transfusion, that, that our Lord Jesus shed his blood, died that cruel agonizing death on the cross to save us and then calls us into that fellowship of believers that we call the church imperfect people problematic people arrogant people at times the people that somehow god is able to to shape and move and inspire and to accomplish things through despite the problems despite the issues despite the weaknesses to the point where even Paul, as he struggled at times with those you know, obstinate uh, Christians in Corinth, Paul could still say, um, I give thanks to my God always for you. That God can still use them and use him. He certainly had a checkered past as well, starting out as a persecutor of the church. Um, he understood better than anyone how a Chuck Colson could be changed, how any of us could be changed and be used by God to accomplish what God hopes and wants to accomplish in the world. Let us pray. Deliver us from harm, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine on us that we may be saved through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great first day of December, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.